Hi, I'm Pete Bridell. I'm one of the horticulturalists at the nursery here at the Botanic Gardens in Canberra. The aim for this garden was always to be able to display a wide range of Banksias from around Australia. But it's been known for a long time that many of the Western Australian Banksias, which are often the most beautiful and iconic species, really struggle to grow in the ground on the east coast of Australia. So in order to do that, we undertook a grafting program where we have tried to graft as many of the Western Australian species of Banksia onto the rootstock of an east coast species. One of the key things with grafting any plant, and in particular banksias, is selection of the correct rootstock. That with banksias takes a lot of trial and error, and it's still a work in progress. But thus far, the vast majority of Western Australian banksias have been successfully grafted onto rootstock of East Coast species. Probably the next most important thing is selecting young, actively growing material, so using either, for example, here, very young Banksia seedlings in the form of micro-grafting or cotyledon grafting, or slightly older um, seed-grown rootstock, but with fresh, actively growing scion material from the plant that you're trying to graft. The third and possibly the most important factor that's um, critical to success is putting the grafted plants into an environment which facilitates successful graft union. It generally requires high humidity but not a very wet environment. So we're fortunate we can use ultrasonic fogging in a grafting hood which allows us to achieve very high humidity without wetting the plants. But lots of Banksia grafters have done it very successfully at home making their own little micro environments to grow in. So it can be done by home growers in their own garden. So once the banksias have been successfully grafted and have come out of our fogging hood, we normally keep them in our growing rooms for a little while just to get used to um, living in a, a, an environment with a lower humidity and then we'll bring them up into our growing tunnels. And usually at quite an early stage, like these that are about three months old, We'll pot them up from this size into bigger pots, like the pots that we've used over here. And these are a range of grafted banksias, which are now somewhere in their first year of life. On some of these examples, you can clearly see where the graft union formed. And there we have a Banksia integrifolia rootstock with Banksia epica from Western Australia that's been grafted on top of that very successfully. Equally over here, we have Banksia integrifolia as a rootstock and Banksia brownii from Western Australia, again, successfully grafted onto that. And we'll tend to keep them here in pots until we're happy that they're big enough and strong enough to be planted in the Banksia garden as a dis display plant. So this brings us to the final product in the Banksia garden. The end of all the hard work in the nursery is successfully grafted beautiful Western Australian Banksias planted in the ground. This plant here is Banksia menziesii from around the Perth area. Um, it's probably about three years old as a graft now. Growing very vigorous, vigorously, flowering beautifully um, in Canberra's very extreme and difficult climate. It's still early days for this garden but there's a lot of successfully grafted Western Australian species growing here and we know that for many of these a graft can successfully grow for 30 to 40 years as a specimen plant. So I think there's a wonderful future ahead for people growing um, some of the really beautiful Australian banksias anywhere in Australia.